Fortnite is one of the most popular games of all time, and the fact that it can run on almost everything from a phone to a high-end console speaks to the flexibility of the solution that Epic has engineered under the hood. Let's take a look at this game and see how it runs on the $500 budget PC. Spoilers, it's a lot better than I was expecting. Before we get into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Additionally, don't forget to leave a comment, especially if there's something I missed. I can't cover every aspect of an entire computer and piece of software in the relatively short duration of a video. I more so wanted to recap the specs of the system, then dive into Fortnite performance. Without anything else to really say, let's dive into what's powering this budget build. With the heart of this build being the $78 Intel Core i3-12100, we've got four relatively powerful cores to drive the Intel Arc A750 as the graphics power for this machine. With 16 gigs of 3200 mega transfer per second DDR4 and a 500 gigabyte Samsung 970 Evo, we've got plenty of fast memory and storage to load and store games to and from. And while the capacity of this Gen 3 NVMe drive is kind of restrictive, for running a few games at a time, it's plenty and is fast enough to significantly speed up load times. With an MSI Mag B760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, we've got a very strong backbone for the system that will leave plenty of room to upgrade later down the line once parts get cheaper. A $40 PowerSpec PSU is powering the entire system, and while I wouldn't necessarily trust it with my 14700K and 4070, it'll be fine for the sub 300 watts this build draws under load. All the specs of this machine are in the description, and for just under 500 USD, it's pretty hard to beat for a CPU with strong single-threaded performance and a powerful 17 teraflop GPU. With the specs out of the way, let's dive into the gameplay and see how this build handles Fortnite. Considering this title isn't known for being ultra-graphically demanding, I decided to start off at the highest settings with epic textures just to get a baseline as to how the game performs with settings that I'd personally use. With an average and 1% low of 91 and 57 FPS at 1080p, things were certainly playable, but performance could definitely be improved. Even 1440p remained playable with an average of 79 and a 1% low of 60, showing that this hardware has what it takes to deliver playable and competitive performance at decent quality settings. 4K saw the average dip down to 46 and the 1% low down to 34 which isn't really that competitive, but could be playable to some out there who are willing to sacrifice a bit of performance for higher pixel quality. Up next, I decided to test at the lowest preset, commonly known as competitive settings. At 1080p, our performance over doubles on average, coming in at 184 FPS, and with a 110 FPS 1% 1 low. Even 1440p saw a dramatic uplift, returning an average of 137 and a 1% low of 92. 4K was even playable at these settings, with an 87 FPS average and a 1% low coming in at 63. I would probably enable the TSR feature at 4K, but without it, things were very playable, and there weren't any issues with stuttering like I was worried there would be. The CPU loaded this preset looks well balanced as well, as there aren't any cores spiking in usage. It makes me wonder how the 4070 I've got would perform with the CPU. To get a better idea as to how the game performs at a middle ground in terms of performance and visuals, I decided to next test at the medium settings with epic textures, and at 1080p and 1440p things were definitely more than playable, but performance overall was depressed. With an average and 1% low of 97 and 72 FPS at 1080p, I would probably create a mixture of medium and low settings to improve the frame rate. but as is, this performance is beyond playable and could easily accommodate competitive play. 1440p is a bit of a different story. It's still playable, don't get me wrong, but the 1% low of 56 is a bit below where I'd want it to be. Once again, lowering the settings would bring up the FPS and make it much smoother, but at the medium settings, it's more than playable and perfectly adequate in the majority of scenarios. 4K is probably where I would enable TSR, as the average and 1% low of 42 and 34 are playable, but definitely suboptimal. You can definitely get dubs with the setup at 4K, but if you want to be as competitive as possible, you'd probably want to render at lower settings to gain some extra performance. I think that the hardware is holding up, but the hit to performance is quite significant at all resolutions coming from the low settings. Mixing and matching the settings to try and get a better performance level didn't really work that well. 
I tried running it a mix of low with ultra textures and TSR enabled, just to see if that's where we were being bottlenecked. And performance didn't improve over the standard competitive settings test. We're actually talking a regression in performance at all resolutions. For this particular machine, texture and post-processing quality, along with render distance, seem to have the largest effects on performance. This ultimately makes sense as we're running on an 8GB card with 16GB of main system memory. With more of both, we might not see as many hiccups, but at the same time it's really not that noticeable in-game. The difference between ultra and high textures is so minor that I literally couldn't tell the difference until I got up to 4K. And that's not even a resolution that this card can comfortably render at. This is the performance of the card on a mixture of settings to get the most performance from the card while minimizing overhead. And the hit we're still seeing kind of hints at a CPU bottleneck. Might be interesting to swap this chip out for something with 6 cores, but for the budget system it's kind of hard to complain, and just means that you might want to stick to competitive settings if you want to get the most competitive experience. If you want to get the most bang for your buck, then another build worth considering is a Ryzen 5 5600 and RX 6600 build which would definitely exceed the performance of what we can achieve on this Intel-based build. The GPU in this budget system has more of a kick to it, but without customized optimizations and software, it probably won't beat out the RX 6600 in a vast number of Fortnite-specific scenarios. Though for the price, the CPU and motherboard combo in this build is a pretty banging deal if you know where to look. If I could upgrade or change anything to attain more consistent performance, it would probably be swapping out the GPU to something like an RX 6600 to get more consistent performance in not only this title, but other titles I've tested so far. An RTX 3060 would probably be another good card to drop in, but if we're on a budget and already spending that much, then the 6700 XT is a similar price and brings a massive jump in performance. With the i3 in this build, we probably could see a slight improvement on the 1% lows in GPU bound scenarios, which Fortnite is full of. But in other situations, we're just limited by the four cores in this machine. Fortnite is a battle royale game, and part of the design of these types of games are large, open worlds for players to fight and explore in. I think this game does a really good job of optimizing where it needs to as compared to something like PUBG or Warzone, but that still doesn't mean that we don't run into hiccups here and there. For 1080 and some 1440p gaming in Fortnite, this build would be incredible. And for $500, it's really hard to beat. But if you're willing to stretch a bit further, then the GPU is where I would probably put some extra money and time into. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Let me know what you guys think about how this build performs. I'd probably stick to competitive settings if I were gaming on a build of this power level, but I do like how you can go in and change some things around and tweak it for how you want to play. That's all I really have to say on the matter. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.